if you're new with this. Um, it's just really another way for us to uh, kind of continue off what we learned last class period as well. You know, we learned how to solve when we had multiple angles, right? And we just solved, and we, what we did is we isolated our um, we isolated our trigonometric function, and then we moved forward. So we look at an equation here, and I have two cosine of x plus uh, the sine of two x. And you know, looking at this, trying to solve what we did usually before when we had two different functions was we were able to somehow get multiplication involved where we could solve for x or y, right? Because, or we could solve for either the sine or the cosine. So when we have two different functions, we can't isolate one and just kind of forget about the other. But a lot of times we need to somehow get uh, multiplication involved so we could apply the zero product property. And this one's kind of getting a little tough because I'm not seeing any multiplication. The only thing I can do is just add one to the other side. But that's not going to help me solve. However, we do have a double angle. And what we're going to be working on today is actually applying using the double angle formulas. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite sine of 2x for the double angle formula. So now I can write 2 cosine of x plus um, the sine of 2x. Let's go and write this over here. Uh, here. The sine of 2x equals 2 sine of x cosine of x. So that's the double angle formula that, I, that I'm going to use. So now I'm just rewrite sine of 2x. Rather than writing it like that, I'm now going to write it as 2 sine of x cosine of x equals 0. So all I'm really doing is taking a formula and then applying it to my equation. Because now I look at this and I say, all right, by looking at this equation, now I can factor out a 2 cosine of x. And that's going to leave me with a 1 plus sine of x. I factor out a 2 out of both of them. Yeah, but there's also two sines. No, this is 2 times sine times cosine. So there's, there's 2 of that whole, pr it's 2 multiplied by the whole product. So I'm factoring a 2, I'm factoring that 2 out from there and from there. Does that kind of make sense there? So now, since I factored out, now I have a product that's going to equal 0. Now I can apply the zero product property. <coughs> okay, so we're working on trying to find all the solutions to this problem. So I look at, I have cosine of zero, so I'm going to go back on the interval of zero and two pi and determine when is cosine of x going to equal zero. Well, on the 0, 2 pi, I have this at angle at pi halves. I have the point, coordinate point, 0, comma 1. And at the angle of 3 pi halves, I have the coordinate point of 0, comma, <coughs> negative 1. Hello, Mr. Rossi. I have this stability. OK. I'll go and give it to him. Thank you very much. So I have cosine of x equals 0, and then sine of x equals negative 1. And now we need to look at when sine of x equals negative 1, which we notice is going to be at 3 pi over 2. So I could say x is equal to pi halves, and x is equal to 3 pi halves. And then to incorporate all the, all the solutions, we notice that these are pi difference away from each other. So I'm not going to worry about writing the solution. I'm just going to have x equals pi halves plus pi n. And since that's going to be the same solution for when sine of x equals negative 1, I'll be able to keep, uh, keep the same solution. OK? Pi halves. So this is when x equals pi um, divided by 2 plus pi n will satisfy your, both your equations. OK? All right. 